Hello and welcome to Heads Up. Now on the show we've met a lot of entrepreneurs. Some have just been starting up while now others run flourishing businesses. One of the increasing popular ways for entrepreneurs to kickstart their business is to attend a startup school. But what is a startup school? I went to one in Gurgaon to see what all the fuss was about. And I believe that it's the best way for an entrepreneur to begin their business. But other, some people think otherwise. Lakshmi has a different view. Why is that, Lakshmi? That's right, Kriti. Let's face it, startups existed way before startup schools did. And some of the most successful startup founders were either high school dropouts or they've had years of experience to their name. None of them needed to get a professional startup degree. So why don't we break this down for the viewers? Why do you think startups are so great? Sure, challenge accepted. When you get an idea that you think you can develop further into a business, it's a good time. You're raring to go and full of hope and optimism about the future. However, your idea needs something to hold it up. But what is that exactly? Welcome to Startup School. Some call it the new age business schools that help you build and manage a company. A startup school is a place for entrepreneurs to come together and work in a structured program to build on their idea and convert it into a full-fledged business. The school need not be your typical classroom, but a place for entrepreneurs to meet others and work, collaborate and ideate with them. There are in fact a lot of small product companies, a lot of small startups. There are accelerators, there are incubators, there are the big funds as well. But it was all very fragmented. So the idea with Investopad was to set up a physical infrastructure where we can try and bring all of these activities together under one roof. Depending on the startup school, entrepreneurs are charged a monthly fee. It includes all infrastructure costs, which are the building, the desks, the coffee machines, Wi-Fi, printers, you name it. But there are other add-ons that are invaluable. Something that you just cannot put a price on, especially if you're an entrepreneur. Places like Investopad offer expert mentorship, legal counsel, and sometimes even seed money alongside the resources. It makes a lot of sense if you're a young startup to be in a place like this for three or four reasons. Okay, one is that uh, you know if you're on your own and you're bootstrapping, you're strapped for money. Uh, these kind of places are extremely. I mean, you will not get a place like a nice place like this at the kind of uh, you know outlays or the monies that people charge. One is that, but money is one one part of the reason. The second is if you see this is an open environment, you know everyone works together, and as you're kind of working, there are a whole host of people, ten or fifteen different teams, also trying to do startups, and so there's a lot of shared learning which happens, shared experiences which happen, which will not happen if you're working in your own room or garage or little office space. There are a lot of, uh, thirdly, there are lots of facilities that spaces like this give, you know, besides bandwidth, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this place, for example, gives you uh, a shared free resource from a, a search engine marketing, search engine optimization viewpoint or a social marketing viewpoint. Uh, also from a UI, UX viewpoint. Now, th those resources and that kind of skills are hard to find and you sometimes get them as a part of the package. And uh, then finally, uh, look, every startup needs investment, right? Needs money at a point of time. And these are places which attract a lot of investors. One of the most important things to keep in mind if you are considering attending such a school is to evaluate the stage your startup is at. Experts advise startups to come when they're ready to test their product. When you are just uh, thinking, you know, brainstorming something, that is too premature stage to actually come to such a you know uh, school like Investopad, because that Investopad really the uh, value that you get is more in terms of mentors and networking and you know uh, extended fundings and everything. Uh, so that is still too premature stage. First, you should really brainstorm it well, really think of all the pros and cons, like you know what all could go wrong, what all could go well, and think of all the use cases that can actually come up. And that after you've done at least a couple of months of thinking, I'll say to the least, then you should consider coming to Investopad or a place like Investopad. Places like Investopad are on the rise in India. While many such startup school and entrepreneur programs exist in the West, India is still finding its feet when it comes to developing such programs.
We work with teams through a bunch of stages. Actually, most of the teams in here are at a pre-market stage. So they've generally created a prototype, they've got validation on their product, and they're ready to scale up from there. They tend to be purely engineering founders, so our main value add is on the design and marketing sites in terms of the actual resources that we provide. So we have design and marketing teams that'll handle your go-to market strategy, that'll create the visual design of your product, that'll create the blueprints of how the architecture works when users utilize the software. The benefits of a startup school are many. And as an entrepreneur, you can reap those benefits when you choose to join a startup school at the right time you're never fully prepared to create a business. But immersing yourself in an ecosystem of innovation, development, ideas and progress is definitely bound to help. So a startup school has many benefits. It gives you the infrastructure, it gives you a network of entrepreneurs that mentor you and advise you, and it also puts you in touch with industry experts and trained entrepreneurs that might even help you fund your business. And that's why I think a startup school is the best option for young entrepreneurs. But Lakshmi has a different opinion. Lakshmi, why is that? Yes, Kriti, as I had said earlier, the best startups, some of the most successful ones, they never went to startup school. They never needed a professional degree certifying them to start up. It was good old experience that they relied on. Here's one such startup, Bonik. Shopping. Most women see it as therapy, some as a chore. But like it or not, a person can spend hours trying to find the right outfit and then figure that it may not be the perfect one. Sanju Rai is one such person. A 23-year-old working professional with an e-commerce firm, Sanju spends an average of 30 minutes browsing through shops before finally filtering what she likes. To top it all off, she also takes opinions from friends who accompany her while shopping before finalizing on her purchase. Normally I go with my friends because I would like to take their opinion like whether the dress will suit on me or not and like whether I mean they always say is like we should dress up like others what say it, it, it really matters like when we dress up and it should look good on us it takes almost like just to select a one dress for me it takes almost like four to five hours for me but not anymore all thanks to Vunik I can get a personal stylist and she would be able to pick a best uh, look for me better than what I would be able to uh, select for myself right so that gap exists there it is not a democratized so the idea was to democratize that it may not have been around for too long but the barely year old startup vunik is already beckoning the e-commerce sector for the technology it offers what exactly does vunik do and how exactly does it work vunik is an e-commerce aggregator that reaches out to conventional e-commerce sites like amintra a flipkart or brands like forever 21 levi's and zara once the brands are on board Vunik aggregates the merchandise on offer from each for the customer to view. But that is not the icing on the cake. Vunik's USP is the personalization it offers. Once a user logs on, it takes a style quiz which identifies women on the basis of various parameters like body shape, skin tone, height and typical style of clothing that they buy. Based on this, it merges machine prediction and curation from experts to throw up best suggestions tailored to users' needs thereby cutting down shopping time, aiding decisions and becoming a personal stylist online. If you look at like uh, books or electronics, uh, like a decade ago you would need a geeky friend or you need professor suggestion to find the best book or the best electronics, right? Uh, today you need not, you can just go to Flipkart or Amazon, read the customer reviews, look at the best sellers and buy the best book or best laptop, right? But it has not had happened for clothing. Vunik's journey began the old school way, like it does for most startups in India. No, not with a co-founder dropping out of college, but with years of hard-earned experience. Vunik was started by 30-something Sujayat Ali, whose previous experience included working with companies like Amazon, Visa and Enotics. Along with the co-founder Navanita Krishnan, who previously worked with Zoho, the two have a combined experience of over two decades between them. And they believe that entrepreneurship should begin without a formal degree in starting up. The startup schools might be helpful, but I'm not sure how much it would be unless you get a real experience into it. Still, there are a lot of problems that uh, I'm not sure any school can easily teach it. Even if you take a uh, customer acquisition, right? So, so the, the thing is like, uh, how do you go and acquire a customer? It's, it's changing day to day. They could go to a school, right? So, uh, but I don't think spending a lot of time there might be helpful. It's better to jump into it. One thing is clear, what these startups are saying is forget the formal education, degree and school to start up. Just take the plunge and learn and unlearn as you go. 
Vunik is also an example of other avenues that a startup can tap into to get mentorship for their products. The startup was incubated in the Microsoft Accelerator program in 2013, to which they owe part of their products progress too. Any other startup we were running like here and there, we were all over the place. Uh, we were focusing on one metric for a week, we will, we will pick up some other metric for the next week, we will stop features in the middle, kind of switch to new features. Right? They brought in discipline, they had us focus on few things, they had us think through that, they had us uh, report that weekly, report that monthly, look at like how we are things doing. Right? And in fact, even after graduating from Microsoft Accelerator, um, we have been in touch with them to um, make sure that uh, uh, we are all aligned in terms of how Unique is growing. An accelerator and an incubator is the other choice for aspiring startups to give their products a boost. Although used interchangeably, they aren't synonyms. What is the difference? If you are in a typical accelerator, your program will last anywhere between four to six months, for which some provide seed capital to help kick off building your product. The accelerators will have mentors who are industry veterans to whom the startups in the program can reach out to for advice. Aside from this, the accelerators will also give wide industry networks whom startups can access. To get into an accelerator, you typically need a working prototype or initial traction. Accelerators are usually also very selective in whom they finally pick for their programs. Incubators, on the other hand, provide startups working space, do not emphasize mentorship, but does provide a basic level of support and typically does not provide funding. Most importantly, incubators don't have the fixed time limits of an accelerator. That's the gist of it, but stay with Heads Up for an in-depth analysis to find the right fit for you. If you are a startup who is still at an idea stage, experts say that it's best to stay away from all three. Attending something like startup school uh, without having an idea or without, uh, without putting it in practice might not be that much of a use. So you need to understand those frameworks. That's where uh, startup schools or other firms or institutes like that will, could help you to give you that framework. If you're taking it like any other degree or any other MBA, then it is going, it's not going to be much useful. Vunik claims that it has grown 50% month on month since January 2014, has reached out to over 100,000 registered customers and has gotten over 15,000 downloads within a month of launching its mobile app. The team plans on taking their startup to international shows in a few months' time. All this without a formal degree in starting up. And now, take your pick from the list of startups who never went to startup school. There you go, Kruti, a startup that scaled heights minus the school. Convinced yet? No, not yet, Lakshmi. I'm not convinced. I spoke to some stakeholders on their take on this entire discussion, but we're going to get you that right after the break.